So since I started a file called Contending for Faith, I wanted to add a video to it that made it worthwhile. In the last one, I showed you how if you deny him in your works, in any work, well, then the law is for you, you're a sinner, and you're done. That's how this works, okay? Jesus freed you from the law. His death on a cross freed you from it. There's no more accusation. There's no condemnation to those that are in Christ. You cannot commit sin because you're of God. That's what it is. You're free. That's the freedom that he talks about. Whom the sun set free shall, shall be free indeed. So anyway, in a follow-up video to the one I just posted, I wanted to teach you something maybe a little controversial, okay? I know. This is plain. It's boring. It's just me with the sheet behind me and my trusty old King James. Well, this is for the people that are serious, like I said. And this is a very serious subject. So if I if teaching you the Bible all day long gets you saved, awesome. Now how do I make you deception-proof? How do I make it so when you walk anywhere, when you talk to anybody, you can know and ground yourself and trust in the Word of God? I'm going to teach you how to spot the frauds. <laughs> this is exciting for me. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to spot the phonies, how to spot a fraud, how to hunt the wolves, how to find out when you're being lied to, how to know. And it all boils down to one thing. Trust your Bible. The Bible doesn't lie, okay? So I know, I throw 1 John 3, 6 at you all the time. I'm always gonna, because 1 John 3, 6 never goes away. And it's confirmed by 1 John 3, 8. It's confirmed by 1 John 3, 9. It's confirmed in John 8, 34. It's confirmed in James 4, 17. It's confirmed in Romans 14, 23. It's confirmed. If you sin, you don't know him, okay? So this is rule number one to go by. When you're dealing with somebody who says they believe, they profess they know God, but in works they deny Him. That's Titus 1.16. Get a pen and paper. Because this time, you, you need to pay attention. Okay, so we start with 1 John 3.6. This is how you do this. Anytime you're talking to a believer, they say they believe, they profess they know God. Okay, if you go to Titus 1 verse 16, that's exactly what it says. They profess they know God, but in works they deny Him. Okay, so... 1 John 3, 6, if you show this to a believer, if they say anything other than it means exactly what it says, then they're lying. If they give you any explanation, any long-winded wisdom, any anything other than just admitting that it means exactly what it says, then they're lying to you. An interpretation is an opinion. I don't have any of those. I'm just reading you what the Bible says. So to spot the frauds, the easiest and quickest way is if they say they sin. Because the Bible says that if they sin, they don't know him. 1 John 3, 6. Whosoever abideth in him, sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth, hath not seen him, neither known him. 1 John 3, 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Here's the confirmation of 1 John 3, 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now watch this. So in verse 10, 1 John 3, 10, it says, In this the children of God are manifest. That's how you know I'm telling you the truth. Okay? The, in this the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. So there's two things there. If you're not doing righteousness, okay, what righteousness are you trying to do? you got to go to Philippians 3, 9, because this is a huge thing in spotting frauds. Philippians 3, 9 says, Be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but his righteousness, which is through faith. Okay? So, our own righteousness, anything that you think you can do, any law keeping you think you need to do, listen, that's self-centered self-righteousness. That is not the righteousness of Christ. You have not submitted to God. That's what that is. So law-keeping righteousness is not what it's talking about here. He's talking about the righteousness of God. And then if you hate your brother, you're, you're, not, you're not of God. So there's the love. You have to love. If you truly trust in him and believe in him, he will bear that fruit in you. And hmm, don't get me started on separating. You all need to separate the works of the flesh from the fruit of the Spirit. They're two different things. The works of the flesh happen the whole time you're living. It never goes away. The fruit of the Spirit bear even with that. It doesn't make a difference. Okay? And this is what this brings me to. So spotting the frauds, right? So if they say they sin, they're not saved. I know you want to believe they are because these are your mothers, your brothers, your pastors, aunts, uncles, cousins, kids, whatever. 
These are the people closest to you. This is the guy you go to on a Sunday and you listen to him and he tells you to turn from your sin. 1 John 3, 9 says, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. How does that work? The only way it works is that Jesus freed you from the law. So now you know, now you know. Watch my salvation assurance videos. Watch them. 1 John 3, 6 is not lying. It means exactly what it says, okay? And when you show that to a believer and they start going on and on and on, they don't know. They're lost. And they don't care. Most of them don't even care, right? They profess they know God and deny Him in their works. So let me show you. If they say they sin, that's number one. That's the easiest way. Done. This null and voids, Gene Kim, real Bible believers. This null and voids, Paul Washer. This null and voids, John MacArthur. This null and voids, all of them. Now let me further compound to that, okay? And here, I'm not trying to diss anybody. I would be more than happy to sit in front of anybody with my Bible. More than happy to do the work of God. Because I believe, right? And that's what you're supposed to do. You have to believe. You cannot commit sin. If you say your sin, you're of the devil. You're not saved. That's the reality of it. So that's how you spot the fraud. That's the easiest way. Now, next, okay? So Philippians 3, 9 is kind of a big deal because it says, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. So if you're trying to keep one commandment, you're trying to have your own righteousness, right? If you think that you're going to keep one commandment, A, you're lying to me, you're lying to yourself, you're lying to everybody around you, and then you're going to break it, and then you're going to have sin, and then you're going to have to own that you didn't know God, that you did not acknowledge him in all your work. And this is what it is. So Jesus says in John 5, 41, I love this verse. I love this verse because it's the truth. This is how, this is, this is the other way to spot the frauds. It's pretty simple. When they say that they are going to somehow honor God, I'm going to keep the commandments to honor God. You're not honoring anything. You're hanging on to your own self-righteousness. That's what this is. This is how you spot the frauds. Jesus says in John 5, 41, in red letter, now I teach that Jesus wrote the whole Bible, right? Red letter, black letter, makes no difference. But for your sakes, for your conscience sakes, I'm going to tell you that red letter, John 5, 41, says, I receive not honor from men. I receive not honor from men. Do you think he's lying? Do you think he's joking? Do you think it doesn't mean exactly what it says? It means exactly what it says. There's nothing you can do except do the will of the Father and believe in the Son, okay, which both is the same, to honor Him. You cannot honor anything. He doesn't care what you think you can do, right? He doesn't care if you think you can keep a Sabbath. He doesn't care if you think that you can never lie again because to say that you're never going to lie again makes you a liar. You're automatically a liar. So stop. This is what it is. John 5, 41 says, I receive not honor from men. I'm going to show you a few other really good ones too, okay? Proverbs 28, 21. Proverbs 28, 21. To have respect of persons is not good. For a piece of bread, that man will transgress. So the Bible says in a whole bunch of places, I'm going to show you a few more, that to have respect of people is not good. You cannot have faith. I forget the actual verse. It says, do not, you cannot have faith in Christ with respect of men. Okay, I forget how it's worded, but that's, that's the verse. There is no respect of God with people. Let me show you. Okay, so you got Proverbs 28, 21. You got John 5, 41. Let's go to Acts 10, 34. Acts 10, 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. This means God does not respect people. He doesn't. He doesn't care what you think you can do. So, spot number two. Okay, you've got if they sin, now... If they say they are honoring God somehow, they're lying. They're not listening. They're not believing their Bible. Okay. Now this goes one of two ways. They are either unknowingly deceived and then deceiving you, or they are knowingly deceived and still deceiving you. And they're real. It's real. Okay. I just got thrown out of church. I went to this church for two and a half years, right? 10 minutes before my wedding, we were set to walk down the aisle. All my kids were dressed. Okay. Everybody was there. Right? My daughter's sitting right across from me right now. Everybody was there. Everybody was dressed. We had like 30 or 40 people. Really beautiful, beautiful wedding. The church said they were going to throw it for us. Everything was kosher. Then he found out I was teaching from the King James, and he pulled me into an office, and he asked me a bunch of questions, and I presented him with the gospel of Jesus because I saw right straight through him because the Bible's clear. And when I presented him with John, 1 John 3, 6, he couldn't answer, and he threw me out of church. He rejected the gospel of Christ. He told, and other dude that was in the office with me actually told me that it wasn't the word of God. I started laughing. I got thrown out. They canceled my wedding right there, right then and there. Boom. 
I don't care. I just don't care. The thing is, is when you hold to the Bible, when you hold to the truth, okay, when you open someone up using this, you're biting into the fruit and you're gonna find out. So I went there for two and a half years, spent all my time there. I did, uh, I don't know, a, a year in the, in the food pantry, breaking my back every week for it. We haven't even got so much as a call from these people to ask if we're okay. All because I presented them with the gospel. This is the truth, right? So these are the people that you love and you gotta pay attention. Um, so God is not a respecter of persons. Uh, Ephesians 6, 9. We'll go here. Galatians, Ephesians 6, verse 9 says, And ye, Master, do the same thing unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your Master also is in heaven. Neither is there respect of persons with him. Okay, there's no respect of persons with God. Now watch. I'm going to show you in Matthew where the Jews, okay, this was awesome. Jesus is such a boss. You guys have no idea. Like, he's such a boss. Just straight. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely awesome. So when the Pharisees went to Jesus, right, they even knew. They even knew. They went to Jesus and they told him. And they sent out unto him their disciples with Herodians saying, this is Matthew 22, 16. Okay. Said, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. They knew even then that Jesus didn't care what you said. He doesn't care. He doesn't care what you do. He doesn't care what you say. All he wants is you to believe in him. Listen, John chapter 6, verse 40, tells you exactly what the will of God is. Period. So far, it's the only verse i found that's like this direct. It is this direct. It is that direct. Everybody that says, oh, I'm going to keep the commandments because I'm doing the will of the Father. You're a liar. You're a liar. What you are is a sinner and the law is for you. Okay? This is the truth. The John, John chapter 6, verse 40 says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him will have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. Okay? Now, believing means really believe, not just professing that you know God and denying him in your works. Okay? So these are your family, your friends. This is why he brought, this is why it brings his soul. Because you're going to know the truth. And you're going to know. And you're going to hold people to the standard of the Bible. It's really easy. It's not hard. It's not hard to be saved. It's not hard to know. Right? But when you want to trust somebody, and you find out that they're not trustworthy, right? That they're not really saved, and they've been convincing you all along. And that's what we're going to go to here. So, uh, Proverbs 28, 21. I want to read this one real quick. Proverbs 20, 28, 21. Uh, to have respect of persons is not good for... Okay, so we did that. Uh, let's go to... And then this brings me to the next one. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. So this is what it is. So if they say they sin, right? If they uh, say that they're going to honor God and by keeping some kind of law. I've shown you now twice. Twice those two. Boom, boom. It's 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 a it's a kill shot. Do do They... They'll side, you'll side blind them then then they're exposed when you expose someone's sin then they can really get saved right okay so first timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says desiring to be teachers of the law understanding neither what they say or where they affirm okay but know that a law is good if a man use it lawfully okay, and i've been over that in previous videos watch the salvation assurance videos watch my understanding the bible series i'm telling you i know it's boring it's me in a sheet but if you want to know, you're, you're going to have to, right? You're, you're going to have to read your Bible, one or the other. You're either going to listen to me and read along and take notes, or you're going to have to go read your Bible on your own. Because if, <laughs> if you believe what the Bible tells you, then you got that it's there's no other there's no other way. Man. There's just no other way. So these are people desiring to be teachers of the law, but they understand either what they say or where they affirm. Okay, this is what it is. They get up on stage, they preach that you need to have some kind of righteousness in your flesh that you can't watch porn, that you can't do this, and you can't do this, and you can't do this. James 2.10 says if you break one law, you break them all. Understand what that, that's the gravity of it. That's what it means. James 2.10 says if you break, you can keep the whole law, but if you offend in one point, you're guilty of all. This is why Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 and 2 says, judge not lest thee be judged. Okay, here, I'm going to go to it. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 1 and 2. So, judge not that ye be not judged. Watch what it says. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Okay? 
what measurement do you think you're using to judge somebody? What measurement are they judging you with? The only measurement to use, the only measurement for flesh righteousness is law. That's the only measurement there is. That's the Ten Commandments. That's the 603 others. That is the only measurement that they have. And if they hold to it and they're judging you, holding you to it, then they can't keep one commandment perfectly, let alone all ten. You're going to trust them? Trust your Bible. Okay? This is what I'm teaching you. This is how you spot the frauds. Let me clue you. There's a lot more of them than you think. Might even be you. But this is what these videos are for, to wake you up. Listen, if they say they sin, they're not saved. Okay? Period. If they say they're honoring God by keeping the commandments, they're lying. They can't honor God. The Bible says so. He says, believe. John 6, 40 and John 6, 28 and 29. It's the work of God is to believe on whom he has sent. It's that simple. There's no adding to it. Right? Jesus did what Jesus did so you would trust him. Trust his word now. Okay? So you've got those two things. If they say they sin. If they say they're honoring God by keeping commandments. Here's the next one. Let's go to John chapter 5, I believe it is. Let's find it. You're going to get a kick out of this one. John chapter 7. John chapter 7, verse 18. He that speaketh of himself seeks his own glory. But he that seeks his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. J John 7, verse 18. Go read it. He that speaks of himself seeks his own glory. Listen to what I'm telling you. All my videos, what am I telling you? Trust your Bible. Trust Jesus. Read this thing. Spend all the extra time you got in it. Eternity means forever. Eternity is forever. You have... you. <laughs> hell is real. Okay? This is the only thing and this is the only truth in the world. Right? Christianity is set apart from every other religion. Why? Because two things. Love and it's grace. Okay? And it's the most hated religion in the world. Do you know how... Man, do you have any idea? I have people that say that they believe in Jesus that call me the devil. This is nuts. But it's the truth. So he that speaks of himself. So when you hear a preacher and it's not I, 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 me, 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 my understanding, my, my opinion, my belief, my this, my that, my... No, 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 no. Take them to the word. Hold them to the word. Ground them in the King James, okay? So you got 1 John 3, 6. If you sin, you don't know God. The Bible is not lying, right? I've taught you how to understand this. You either have full faith now and you're actually saved. Or you still don't understand and you need to go back and watch Salvation Assurance videos and you need to spend all your time in your Bible. Okay? So you've got 1 John 3, 6. Then you've got John 5, 41. I receive not honor from men. So people that say they're honoring God, they're lying to you. Now you've got he that speaks of himself seeks his own glory. Right? Plus they desire, they desire to be teachers of the law, not understanding neither what they say or where they affirm. Right? This is the frauds. These are the frauds. They're frauds. They lie. They're liars. They seek their own glory. They're chasing that self-righteousness, righteousness of the law, and they're not submitting to the righteousness of Christ. Romans 10, 1 through 4. Romans 10, 4 is probably my favorite verse. It, I mean, it's got to be because it's just the boom. And it says, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for all those who believe. Why? Because Philippians 3, 9 tells us to be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but to have his righteousness, which is through faith, which is of God. Right? Philippians 3, 9. Then be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Okay? So anybody preaching to you that you have to somehow clean your flesh up, they're lying. They're not saved. Stop being deceived. That's what I'm telling you. Stop being deceived. Stop being lied to. Stop allowing yourselves to be lied to. Trust Jesus in all your works. All of them. Okay? Because if you're born of God, if you trust him, if you have that faith, if you spend the time in his word, he says if you, if you, uh, what is it, John? I always use it. John 8, 31 says, if you continue in my word, 
then you are my disciples indeed. Right? So continue in his word. Be his disciple. Learn what his word says. Because then you're deception proof. And you're able to teach your children. And they'll teach their children. And they'll teach their children. Right? No pastor taught me this. No schooling in the world can teach you faith. No nothing. None of it means anything. Right? Suits and ties. Religion. Rules. Regulations. It's all garbage the bible means exactly what it says trust him that's what i'm teaching you trust him what else did i have outlined for you that's how you spot the wolves they speak of themselves they teach laws they teach commandments they teach flesh righteousness okay period oh second corinthians chapter 11 before i wrap this up Thank you all for all your patience. I know this is boring. I know it's boring. I know sitting there watching me talk in front of a screen is boring. But if you have a pen and paper and you're paying attention, you're learning a lot. I'm telling you, this thing does not lie. The Bible tells the truth. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. I'm going to show you. When you take everything, when you take it all, when they sin, when they seek their own righteousness, when they speak of themselves, when they do all this, right? As soon as you figure out they're not saved, it's really easy. You only need one of those, right, to find out if they're real or not. Here's the reality of it. Let me tell you what these people are. John MacArthur, Paul Washer, Daniel Pratt, um, the dude from Wretched, okay? I, and it's not to offend anybody. I would love to sit down with them and talk to them and see where their faith is because when I listen to them preach, I'm just jaw-dropped, amazed at how ignorant they really are to the truth and what the Word really says. They don't understand it, so they just teach you and they become this guy watch so second corinthians 11 13 through 15 says for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of christ and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works, because they trust their flesh more than Jesus, right? Now, I'm using the bigger names here, like Paul Washer, John MacArthur, these guys, Steve Anderson. That was one a buddy of mine showed me the other day. <sighs> Come on. So I'm using the bigger names, but these are the people in your very own church. These are the people that sleep next to you at night. These are the people, these are your children, your friends, your family. These are them. You have to ground yourself in this. There's no way around it. If you don't, you can't know. What, are you going to listen to me? Don't trust me. Trust the Word. Listen to what I'm telling you. Trust Jesus. Trust the Bible. Don't frustrate the grace of God. This is very simple stuff. Very simple. My 10-year-old understands the King James from Matthew to Jude perfectly. Right? That's, it's that easy. You just have to want it. So that's how you spot a fraud. That is absolutely how you spot a fraud. And someday, listen, it doesn't bother me. I don't have any respect for people. I know what people are, right? You're going to have to come to that crossroads. They're going to have to come to that crossroads too. They're going to have to come to the crossroads where they're going to submit to him in full or they're done. It's not a joke. I take this very, very seriously. Enjoy your night. Thank you for all your time. I think by now I can say God bless. <laughs> Stay out of trouble, people.